This morning, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Commandant of the Marine Corps, General David H. Berger, welcome to today's change of command ceremony, in which Lieutenant General Logan and Jury will relinquish command of two Marine Expeditionary Force to Lieutenant General David A. Eisenhower. Today's ceremony is being executed by the Marines and Sailors of two Marine Expeditionary Force. Lieutenant General Jury and the Marines and Sailors of the two Marine Expeditionary Force would like to extend a warm welcome to General David Berger, Sergeant Major Troy Black, General Robert Magnus, Lieutenant General Christopher Mahoney, Lieutenant General Joseph Osterman, Lieutenant General Frank Panton, Lieutenant General Gary McKissar, Major General Odd Harold Hagen, Major General Dale Alford, Major General Michael Morshaw, Major General Frank Donovan, Major General Matthew Collier, Major General Scott Benedict, Major General Ronald Richard, Major General Robert Dickerson, Brigadier General Andrew Neal, Brigadier General Michael McWilliams, Brigadier General Mark Clinton, Brigadier General Kevin Stewart, Brigadier General Norm Cooley, SES Peter DeLorean, Captain Kevin Brown, Colonel Garth Burnett. Also in attendance are former 2 F Commanding Generals and Sergeant Major, Lieutenant General Robert Hedlund, Lieutenant General Dave Feigler, Mrs. Gwen Rawlings, <coughs> Sergeant Major Ron Hinsworth. We'd like to welcome Sheriff Hans Miller, Mr. Adam Caldwell, Ms. Anita Best, Ms. Lorette Legan, the Military Affairs Committees of Jacksonville, Swansboro, and Wilmington, and the Beirut Veterans of America, Chapter 4. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we would like to thank the community leaders and the organizations they represent who have generously supported the Marines, sailors, and families of this command. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for your presence in this change of command. The ceremony is short, the words are few, but the lasting impact of command and the authority of command is awesome. Lieutenant General Journey and Lieutenant General Adenon are about to pass between them the flag of the 2 Mav Expeditionary Force. A simple gesture, but an extremely important gesture nonetheless. So as it passes, Lord, Strengthen them both in the tasks to which you have called them. Go with Lieutenant General Journey as soon as they prepare the war for them. As they go off to Hawaii, let them rest in your grace. May you bless them for what they've done here and for their service to everyone who is standing before you this morning. Remain behind board with Lieutenant General Anima and his name as he leads the meth to be my his excellence. Lord, as he assumes command, May he have the wisdom of Solomon in the decisions that he must make. May he have the courage of David when faced with the giants of the day. Let him have the strength of Samson to endure the daily grind. And the patience of Job to deal with the ever-changing demands placed upon him. Above all else, Lord, let him have the compassion of our Lord himself in dealing with those under his care. Give all of us here the that commitment to serve a new commander with honor. We pray especially for his family, Lord. We pray for strength for Diana. May she be blessed in this transition. So thank you, Lord, for never ending love, strength, courage, and guidance. All of them keys to unlocking the full potential of his life. We pray this in the name of the one who was called and equipped to do such a great work. Amen. Amen. Now taking his position on the parade field is the commander of troops for today's ceremony, Colonel David R. Everland.
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. President Day parades in the Marine Corps have their bases in both history and tradition. The massed formation of troops on one long line at close interval made possible the massing of firepower from muzzle-loaded muskets of yesterday. In those early days, the line of battle was just that, a line of two or three ranks and looked much like the parade formation you will see today. The adjutant forms the line for battle. The adjutant for today's ceremony is Major Jane Simpson. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the marching on of the pillars and remain standing for the playing of our national anthem.
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. It is believed that Selma, a staff to the Crusades, when troops volunteered for the Crusades and fired to their embarkation, they were formed on the right, on the line, from the command and the other troops present. As an honor to these volunteers, the band struck three chords of the present day sound. While the other troops cheered three times. To further honor the volunteer crusader, the band then rushed out from the line and troops up and down while playing. The square formation used by the band with its wooden turns and copper watches dates back to 300 BC when Alexander's Macedonian palace of Spirit conquered all kings from ancient Greece to India.
the parade pageant now presents the assembled command to the commander of troops. Officers, send your watch. Commanders will come forward and salute the commander of troops. This affords the commander an opportunity to give his officers any last minute encouragement or instruction, either for the battle in the past or for the parade today.
taking his position in the reviewing area is the Commandant of the Marine Corps, General David H. Byrd. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for honors to General David H. Berger and remain standing for honors to the Commanding General of two Marine Expeditionary Force. Taking his position in the reviewing area is the Commanding General of two Marine Expeditionary Force, Lieutenant General William M. Journey.
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Now joining the Lieutenant General Jury in the reviewing area to assume command of two Marine Expeditionary Corps is Lieutenant General David A. Ivey. most solemn moment, the actual passing of command. The battle colors of the Marine Corps unit symbolize the authority and accountability of command. Transferring the colors during the ceremony symbolizes the relinquishing of command by Lieutenant General Journey, and by accepting the colors, Lieutenant General Icon accepts command and confirms his total commitment to the Marines and sailors that he will command. Delivering the colors to the commanding general is Sergeant Major Lonnie Travis, the two Marine Expeditionary Force Sergeant Major.
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I asked the Commanding Generals, both of them, they would give me permission to place them at rest because uh, standing in at attention in, in uh, Carolina in August is a chore. We don't want to put the Marines out any more than they need to. Uh, for those of you who are regulars at uh, Camp Lejeune in Jacksonville, uh, thank you for allowing me and Donna to come back and the Sergeant Major and Stacy. For us, this is close to home as we have. This is where we raised our family. And uh, I was listening to the chaplain's words about the wisdom of Solomon. Uh, all I could think of was when we were majors and lieutenant colonels and captains, probably we didn't have anywhere near the wisdom of Solomon living on St. Mary's Drive. But it's great to see they do have now the wisdom of Solomon. <laughs> Both of them to command this uh, phenomenal map. None of this uh, ceremony, of course, happens automatically. There's rehearsals. A lot of people that you and I can see and some that we don't see. And from the left, got you guys know, leading the band, the color guard, all the Marines that gave it, that parked us, that provide security, all the Marines that are marching in front of us, Sergeant Major Travis who organized all this. Can you join me just please in thanking all the Marines that organized this? messed up uh, General Dirty and forgot protocol because they, they have maybe the hardest job of all. But uh, thanks to everybody who organized this. The ceremony. First, just a word or two about the ceremony. As the narration goes along, and you and I were listening, and the, the flag gets passed from one leader to another. Pretty amazing for you and me just to watch because in this in that moment, in that second that one leader lets go of that guidance and the other one has it in their hands that all of the authorities, all of the responsibilities happen, you know, in less than a second. That transfer just like that. Amazing for us to watch. And, that, and now we have a new commanding general. That's, of course, the change of command. But it's good for you and me to also think that although the two leaders are changing, the color guard, all those Marines, all the Marines across the entire MEF, North and South Carolina, all of them were here last week. They'll all be here next week. They are, the Marines are the continuity. We're here for a change of command, but really the mission, the Marines, the unit, always more important than than any two leaders. I'm incredibly proud, Don and me, to be here this morning. It's a fantastic ceremony. The Marines just look incredible. Thanks for allowing us to be part of it. This Marine Expeditionary Force, I think if you were here 10 years ago, and some of us were, or, or maybe even one year ago, amazing to see the speed at which this meth is learning, is changing, is adapting. 
in a year's time. Just amazing to watch. And it's not, I don't think it's about uh, equipment. I don't think it's about aircraft. I don't think it's about vehicles. It's, 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 a, it's a climate of learning. It's an atmosphere that the journey's put into this place that we can figure this out. We can learn fast. We can adapt. And, it, and from the commanding general all the way down to corporals and lieutenants, I think they are moving at 100 miles an hour to solve problems. But it's, it has always been about people. The two methods. The place right now where learning is happening. And I think there's, from my watching it, where I am privileged to be now, it's amazing. I, I think probably... The most visible example for me is Task Force 61-2. Although there's a hundred of them, probably the most visible for me to watch happen. And from the outside, you see something like Task Force 61-2 do all kind of amazing things in Europe. And you think, wow, they really figured it out when they got there. But those of us who knew General Curry and all of his leaders beforehand know that it didn't start when when they got to Europe. Because the relationship that he built with Sixth Fleet, that his commanders built with their counterparts in Europe, all the prep by the Marines, all that was done before they ever got to Europe. And yeah, they did amazing things. They're still there. But at, the magic of it, I think, was General Journey's leadership long before they ever deployed. But that is just one example of this method moving way in front of the Marine Corps, pulling the rest of the Marine Corps forward, figuring out where we need to be in the future. All because of a, a leader who allowed his supporters the room to make decisions, the room to grow, the room to make mistakes. And I give all that credit to uh, General Journey. But it's not a surprise. If you knew General Journey, if you knew Captain Journey, or Lieutenant Colonel Jerry, it's not a surprise. Every place that he has gone, he's an infantryman. He approaches every job that I've ever known you in as I took over a good fighting position, I will try to make it better. Every place that you have been, the two of you have been. And he inherited a good fighting position from General Boudreau. And then on the next day, you and Sue Start making it better. Because it's you now your fight position, and I'm gonna make it better. And you have. I, Don and I, the rest of the Marine Corps are so grateful for the both of you giving this this map a room to move and the guidance that they need and the support that they need. And Sue, I have watched you since he was a company commander. And what you what you do at a MEP level is the same thing that you did as, at a company level, which is put your your arms around somehow around all 47,000 Marines in the MEP, love them, care about them, even when they have tough days, uh, you support them. And for every day uh, since Bill took command, we'll never be able to pay you back for that, but I am eternally grateful for everything that you have poured yourself into this country. There's no possible way we can possibly can repay you. But I don't think you're after that. I think you love the people in this map, not expecting anything in return. It's amazing example. They're going to the largest command that we have in the Marine Corps, the largest operational command. There's no accident in that it's not by coincidence. Somehow, I don't know how you're going to put your arms around 80,000 Marines somehow and hug them all and love them all the same way you did when there was 150. I don't know how you do it, too, but you will figure it out. You will know how. Up the street from the burgers on St. Mary's Drive were the Adignans. Uh, neither one of us had the wisdom of Solomon back then. But, but, um, 
we, me and Donna and our family were privileged to learn the Adignans on St. Mary's Drive here during one of our three tours here and it was magical to watch. Then I was lucky to watch him work alongside of him in one map. Amazing leadership there. And then the, the last job, which is not the job that he asked for, but the job he was cut out for, which is taking care of all the people in the Marine Corps. He talks about, if you listen to General Adignan, he talks about the business of people. Because he believes it. And I think here at TUMEF, you want your primary focus, you and Diane, will all be about people. You're inheriting a great fight position. You're going to make it better tomorrow. And the two of you are exactly the right pair at just the right time. And if the rest of, the rest of us won't be pretty exciting to watch you take command and lead this map from where Bill is handing it off to you and Sue to where you're going to take it. You have the Commandant's 100% support. Now I'm extremely proud of where you've been and the two of you taking command today. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, your former Commanding General, Lieutenant General Bill Jury. Well, uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, friends, family, Marines, and uh, just, you know, wow. You know, Commandant, uh, Miss Donna, um, I know you got deep roots here at Camp Lejeune, as you spoke about, and I just want to say thank you. Uh, you know, thank you for recognizing the, the great work, uh, hard work uh, of the whole team here uh, this morning, first and foremost, and, and certainly uh, thank you as well you know, for the opportunity for us to come back here and get on the map. So now, now, I know most of you came here to see Sue and not me, and I'm used to that. I'm over it, all right? I get it. I, I, I know how this works. I've come, come uh, clean on that sentiment a long time ago, but sincerely, we do appreciate each and every one of you sharing this very special day with Sue and I, the command, Diana and Dave, and it means a, uh, a great deal to us. Much like the Commandant, uh, you know, a lot of great hard work going into this thing. Sergeant Major Travis and the whole team putting this thing together. You know, it's been about two years since we rolled out, marched out, uh, all of our formation, all of our colors, and bringing the cannons forward and representing the additions uh, uh, of the United States Marine Corps. And these guys uh, and gals are certainly making us proud. So uh, I do, if you would, please join me in a big round of applause for you for the Marines. Hey, look, with, uh, with every change of command, it is, uh, it is always bittersweet, as you know, and, and today is certainly no different uh, uh, for us, uh, because Camp Lejeune is home to us. You know, it's home, uh, much like uh, the Commandant, in, in regards to, uh, this is where I was raised as a Marine. You know, this is where we raised our family. And being raised here as a Marine, professionally, there are so many people sitting in this audience today uh, that took such a tremendous role in showing me what right looks like um, that, that I just can't even go down the whole list for you today and what they, what they have meant. And, uh, and they had their hands full because I, I was quite the project, I believe. But, uh, you know, uh, likewise, uh, personally, uh, it's home to us because it's where we raised our family. And there are just countless individuals here today who have shared in our lives in so many ways. Uh, you know, Stone Street Elementary School, the Devil Pups at Camp Lejeune, the, you know, the White Oak Vikings, uh, our extended Marine Corps family, and the community and friends here from Wes and Cherry Hambright, and Dave, Catherine Coots, uh, Carlos, and Teresa, I mean, and the list goes on and on. It is a very tight uh, community indeed. It is one in which the traditions and the legacy of the command in Camp Lejeune in this community are such that they are inextricably linked and rally together in tough times and required in good times. You know, from tragic events of Beirut, the full mobilization of Desert Shield and Desert Storm, to Iraq and Afghanistan and hurricanes and everything between. Uh, it is one team, one fight, and it is unique and special here, uh, like I have never seen nowhere else, but it is special uh, because of the people indeed. 
And I would just say that Sue and I both are forever grateful uh, for the opportunity to be able to have shared in that and call the campus union home for us. So as one of my mentors here uh, kicked me left and right a long time ago and uh, told me, uh, Steve Davis, to keep the main thing the main thing. Uh, when we hit the ground here at uh, Camp Lejeune, the main thing has always been about everything that will improve or enhance our operational capabilities. That's always the main thing. Today, for the leaders here, as you go back to your formations, I would ask you to take back the main thing today, and that's a simple message, and that's just simply to say thank you. Thank you to all our Marines and sailors for all that they have done. Specifically, thank them for their dedication and their professionalism. A little bit as uh, the Commandant referred to, you know, uh, kind of have this idea or approach on life in general, or as an individual or as a unit, that you either get better or you get worse. You can never stay the same, all right? I wake up every day and put my boots on, and I try and embrace that as an individual, as a person, and then try to bring that to the command. And I say that because if you think you're staying the same, let me tell you, in this war fighting business we're in right now, there's a thinking, breathing enemy that gets a boat, and they're working real hard every day, and by default, you're going to be getting worse if you ain't working on getting better. There is no status quo in the business we're in. And i got to tell you that each and every one of these Marines, they gripped that. It was a tall ask. And from the junior Marine to the senior experienced leadership around here, those are the things as it's game of inches that move the needle and the get better, get worse uh, approach in the business world. So some of those results um, that we talked about already, you know, as the Marine Corps uh, remains our premier 911 force for our nation, and we do, um, you know, we here in Two Men, we consider ourselves the force of choice for that 911 force each and every day. And over the course of this year, I can just tell you, it's not some experimental game or a, a mythical theoretical discussion. It's been boots on the ground in five different GCCs all across the geographic combat commands over the course of this year, some of which he just named. With crisis response in Haiti and an earthquake, uh, putting together a MAGTAF task organized team tailored to go do what we always do here at Camp Lejeune and taking care of business pushing out folks to help the Afghan refugees and OAW here in Quantico to turn it around the 612 partner with our naval forces and partners in Europe in the Ukraine crisis and supporting that. We're pushing out TAC Air and CENTCOM. The flight line and the barracks have been empty more than once around here. And that's just the business of the business. And that's who we are and that's what we do. And I'm telling you that has not changed one bit. But we can walk and chew gum at the same time. And while we're doing that, we can also continue to get better, right? And I think you expect us to be doing that. And so we've continued to modernize and become more lethal each and every day. Much of that we have employed over the course of this year, and we looked at be using that a whole lot more going forward. So that part of the Marine Corps that you all know and love, I'm here to tell you, has not changed. We still shoot, move, and communicate with the best of them. We're getting better each and every day, and that's what you expect going forward. So, whether we keep it the main thing, the main thing, or we're getting better, we're getting worse. You know, I got another journeyism. When you remain flexible and you remain balanced so that you can respond in every climb and place, I say, hey, you got to give yourself two ways to win, and three is even better. You know, I ain't going to put all my eggs in one basket. And I had a gunner that worked for me out in the division there, y'all. Oh, and he said, hey, sir, you know what? I think I figured out what your second way to win is. I'm like, yeah, what's that? He said, it's Sue. <laughs> and I said, well, you know, I ain't going to disagree with you on that, Gunner, but I'll tell you for uh, some time now, you know, she's been my first, she's been my second, she's been my third way to win, truth be told, right? And as the Commandant pointed out, um, she jumps right in in the same vein of get better, get worse, puts her arms around everybody, continues to advocate, find ways, move the initiatives, I mean, well, she was working on here with Sarah, BJ, uh, George Intel, Barbara Dozier down over here, Melissa, Teresa. I mean, these, these are household names, right, here at Camp with you. I mean, you're shaking your heads because you know exactly what I'm talking about, right? And so does she. And so she brings her own uh, come to fight, come to win attitude. And honey, I love you for it. I appreciate it. And, uh, I, I recognize that it is a one-two punch all the way. We'll continue to do the same point forward. So thank you very much. Also, have both of our uh, our kids here today. Um, although uh, clearly they're 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 not kids anymore. And uh, so uh, Troy and his fiance uh, Cassie 
Uh, we're booking in the continental United States from San Diego to the Outer Banks, so they're in here from San Diego and from Madison in from uh, Cape Hatteras today, so uh, we're glad to have you home. We don't all get together all the time, so it is indeed a special day for that. We are so proud of each and every one of you, but I got to tell you, uh, at this age of our life, now on the 22nd PCS move, I am missing my working party. Right, so uh, that's kind of, uh, that's kind of that's the team just a little bit, there, right? So uh, for uh, hey, for Dave and Diane, uh, you know, I'll come and say welcome back. You know, Lieutenant General Audie Nunn is no stranger uh, to two men and Campbell's Union, and he is certainly no stranger to it, to the MAGTAF operations business. Um, and and we are absolutely so excited for both of you. You know, a proud legacy, reputation, traditions of two men all uh, the criticality that it means to the Marine Corps, to our nation. Uh, I know you understand that, and you're just going to take a full 30 going forward, so you and Diane, we couldn't be happy to talk about you uh, as you take the place here today. So, ladies and gentlemen, again, it has been an absolute honor and privilege uh, to be able to come back here home to, uh, to the Carolina Magdalene. Uh It is indeed uh, the highlight of, of a career to be able to come back here and to be able to come back home. So uh, for those of you that know me at Change of Command, you know, I'm always telling the incoming guy, hey, look at here, congratulations, but, uh, you know, anything you find wrong in that command, you can blame the old guy until the sun goes down. But after that, I don't want to hear his name again, you won't. You got that? <laughs> so now, unfortunately for me today, I had to schedule this thing pretty early in the morning, so I gave Dave a lot of time to work with, so uh, I would very much appreciate it if you all would join us at the club after this. I keep him tied up for as long as you can. <laughs> so, brother, congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, the Commanding General 2 Meth, Lieutenant General Jay Bonnyhouse. Guests, generals, uh, commanders, senior leaders, senior sergeant majors, master gunnery sergeants, family and friends. Let me be very brief this morning. Just a quick way to say thank you. Thank you very much for your hospitality to be here this morning with us and share uh, with the second Green Expeditionary Force just how special this community is. I, I would like to just recognize the, the community leaders that are here, the state as well as federal leaders that are here, representatives. I can't thank you enough for over the years, the support that you provided the Marines, the sailors, and the families of Camp Lejeune and three different counties that surround. Thank you very much for all you do. It's, it's truly uh, wonderful to be back. Commandant, thank you for the opportunity. I'm very humbled by it. Um, I appreciate your trust and confidence in me. I will not let you down. Bill, just want to say one thing. You you have put this meth on a course. And it's your leadership and your direction that have had a tremendous impact. I can see it. I can feel it. And I know that the position that you took and the position that I now will assume is in great place. Your transition points, I appreciate it. And it's it's really amazing to be a part of and be around you again. You and Sue are very close friends of ours. I've been for years. And I know that uh, everyone in here, you have their admiration and their respect. And uh, as I whispered here yesterday morning, I was sitting out here and I just put my head down and I said, Bill, I'm really sorry that you have to leave the Carolina Mac because I know how much you love this area, this community, these and, uh, but Diane and I wish you the very best. Aloha. I know there's a big challenge out there. And I do believe you're the right guy, the right place, the right time to go out there and, and uh, make us proud out there. So, so thank you. Um, excuse me if I just turn my back for a second, just so I can look at these young men and women out here, the Marines of the Met. You know, a lot has changed in Camp Lejeune. You come onto the base, and, and uh, General Neville's got his hands around it. Uh, but it, I need a map to, to recognize where I am again. Uh, I've gotten lost already twice in Wallace Street. <laughs> but there is one constant that I noticed right away. It hasn't changed. It can't be 
And that's the grit, the war fighting competence, the tenacity, and just that little secret sauce that comes from being in Carolina and being a war fighter from Carolina. It's there. It is evident, Commandant. Every place I've been thus far, the energy is there. And it is just humbling to be back, to be accounted amongst your ranks, to be a part of those ranks with you. And I look forward to, to serving with you. I know that come to fight, come to win is the motto here at Carolina MAGTA, has always been. And you were right. And I also know that when the nation calls, Two men will be ready to answer the bell. So I look forward to the challenges with you. Again, as Bill said, I look forward to seeing you all at the uh, club this afternoon. And I'll personally uh, shake hands and thank you uh, personally. So thank you very much for your attendance. And we'll see you there. Semper Fi. In lieu of flowers, Lieutenant General Journey is making a donation to Hope for the Warriors on behalf of Mrs. Sue Journey. And Lieutenant General Eidenbaum is making a donation to the Semper Fi Fund on behalf of Mrs. Diana Eidenbaum.